Hi guys! Today I'm gonna be stitching with you the mushroom cup. I have three colors in my embroidery design. I decided to go with uh, four colors. So there was uh, this, this and this color in the pattern and I decided to add a darker shade like this one to add some deepness for the cup. If you're new here, this is the stitch along that uh, I'm gonna be doing for October and we are going to be stitching the Amanita Mushrooms family. <laughs> this is how the design looks like and today we are starting. If you want to stitch it uh, with me, you can uh, join the stitch along by getting this pattern on my Etsy shop or you can join my uh, Patreon teaching club and um, that is uh, this pattern is also available um, on Patreon as well. So you can do it two ways, whatever you like. You can buy the pattern separately or you can join my stitching club and you'll get access to more than 100 patterns. Usually I start with some simple um, elements like leaves, something simple to start from, to warm up, but I don't know, I just, uh, just want to start stitching this uh, embroidery right now with the main object which is in the center and then I will be stitching leaves and all the rest around it. Let me know in the comments if you are going to be stitching with me and uh, let me know if you are also ready and transfer the pattern to the fabric and all the threads prepared, let me know. I would like to start from the marking the stitches direction. Not sure which color I will start first. I think I will start from the main uh, medium color. I did uh, some testing. <laughs> right here. So I tried to embroider a little cup of the mushroom and I started from the darkest shade and I went to the uh, medium color and the lighter color and uh, the lightest color appeared on the bottom. That's what I don't like because um, I, it is hard to control where the lightest color will be. So I would probably start from the medium color somewhere where it goes and then I would uh, do some highlights with the lightest color and uh, then probably I will stitch the darker colors around and it will allow me to control the areas where they should go because while you stitching from the top you can forget and uh, you will end up with the lightest color on the border right here. Uh, it's also an option, but um, I think that the darkest color should go the last because like with drawing, you know, I usually when I draw with watercolor, I start from the lightest colors, then I add uh, layers of darker colors and it will start looking like a three-dimensional object. So let's go this way with embroidery. And in my pattern, ha you will have uh, all the stitches directions already in the pattern. So you can print it on the stick and stitch solely, so you will, you will not need to draw it separately. This is where the medium color should go. And as you can see, you have those marks, white marks. Uh, I think I will be stitching them the last because uh, it's gonna be easier for me to mix the colors for long and short shading because um, if I will be stitching around those uh, marks it's gonna be harder to stick to the right stitches uh, direction so I will be stitching them later on top of the main background that I will make. Let's mark the stitches direction it should go like this and we also will have the lightest area right here you can just look at the direction stitches direction guide uh, without uh, drawing like this but uh, i recommend to draw it directly on the design so you will not forget and you will not go uh, accidentally to another direction you know you can draw it using different uh, pen colors 
I will use a medium size of the needle and I will go probably with two strands of floss for the main color and the main color is gonna be this one 666 it's DMC if you have any questions just ask me in the chat and I will try to reply right away I just took one strand of floss I put them together the ends together so I have a loop on this side and I will start stitching without knots so I'll start from the middle I use two strands of floss only for this layer and then for color blending I will switch to one strand of floss just a big area and I want to feel it faster so I will use long and short stitch for filling. It will probably take me a while to fill it. So let's chat. Tell me what the weather looks like in your country. In Moncton right now it's so shiny and it's like it looks like we have the last months of the summer and it's really warm outside. If you are a beginner, there is another way how you can fill this uh, cup. You can fill it entirely with just one medium color and uh, you can use a uh, stem stitch for filling and then after it's all done you can just uh, stitch on top of the everything you have using one strand of floss with the lightest color right here and uh, uh, on the edges you can stitch with one strand of floss and you can add some shades, some darker shades. So this is a simple way how you can do it. Okay, starting another thread. I have a loop on the back side, so I can show you from the front what is going on. So. You leave the loop, you come up right here and you go through the loop, but you go from the back side. Right here I will go through the same place, so I will flip this loop to the back side. So this is how you can start your thread without any knots. So when you stitch, you need to keep in mind the stitches directions that you need to follow because it's very important when you will be mixing the colors. And also don't forget where this color should go. Remember the pumpkins that I was stitching? So you can use the same method for filling. And by the way, regarding the colors, you can use any colors you would like from dark red to orange. And uh, right here, um, when I was uh, walking around, I saw different colors of uh, Amanita mushrooms, or how do you call it? Fly, agaric, Amanita. Let me know, how do you usually call it? So. I saw orange ones, I saw red ones, and I saw really light, light orange Amanita mushrooms. So they are different kinds of uh, mushrooms like this in the nature. So you just uh, take a look on the pictures of the real photos of those mushrooms. And from here you can decide to which colors uh, you would like to choose maybe in your area you have just orange mushrooms like this and you can use orange colors maybe if you want to add one more layer um, maybe just uh, uh, bind your hoop with some fabric because truth be told it's uh, pretty hard to go through both uh, fabrics 
at the time right now plus the sticky <laughs> stabilizer so it's a little bit hard to stitch i added one more layer because this fabric it it has a uh, big holes and uh, it was uncomfortable to draw on it and plus it was um, when you want to make sharp edges it 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 will be not really comfortable because this uh, fabric has a uh, huge holes so this is the reason why i stitch with two layers of fabric <laughs> right now yes i'm stitching um on the, all the dots later i will sh i will show you how you can um stitch them <laughs> no worries if you don't remember where they are located that's fine you can uh, um, make one more layer of the stick and stitch solve just uh, stick on top of it uh, stitch all the marks and they they will be removed uh, they will be washed washed away i do it this way because it's more comfortable for long and short shading if you have enough time you can stitch this with only one strand of floss I just don't want to keep you for a long time on the live stream, so I decided to go with two strands. So as you can see when I go through, sometimes I split my previous stitches, sometimes I go between them. I just make sure that everything is filled and there is no gaps right here. Okay, your fabric is a loose wave also. Yeah, it's a, if it's a loose wave too, so another layer of fabric will be good. If you see that there is some gap, you can go back and add one more stitch. I'm stitching with a stick and stitch solely for the first time and I can notice that my needle becomes a little bit sticky. Somebody told me about that. But it's a great solution for those who doesn't like to draw by hand. Uh, yes, somebody can have like shaking hands or it just too, takes too much time to draw it by hand because the design can, make, can have a lot of details. So I understand that. And because of fabric. Sometimes fabric is really hard to trace it, the design right onto this fabric. Especially if you have some dark fabric and it, your um, pan is not visible. And one more thing you need to keep in mind when you are stitching with long and short. And uh, many of your stitches, they go into the same direction, so it can cause the fabric uh, puckering, so make sure that you have your fabric really tight in your hoop so it doesn't cause any puckering. Maybe if I will switch to the smaller needle it will be easier to go through all those fabric layers. So I don't go down right to till the edge because uh, there will be one more color going right here. So and I leave some space around this place. Usually when I'm stitching and listen some music, like lofi, hip hop, it's just the music, really calm and it has no words and it really helps me to focus and relax and enjoy the process. There are other kinds of um, water soluble, soluble stabilizers and they are not sticky. So you, if you don't uh, like this one, you may want to try, which is not sticky, but how you will be printing it. You probably will need some uh, sticky paper, like, um, and then stick it to that paper and print it and then later maybe I will when I will have my own printer I will be experimenting with this so with this main color I will go a little bit um, 
outside of the line that I need because um, this is the place when I will be mixing the colors so they will go um, outside of this line and the next color that I will be mixing it with it will also go outside like it will cross this line so this is a space for color mixing and later I will probably will be back with the same color and I will add more stitches but using only one strand of floss to make sure that the mixing is uh, smooth and so just don't worry this is like drawing you can always go back to the same place and add more stitches you can also start from the lightest color right here probably so it's just up to you how do you feel comfortable you can also test the thread colors on some piece of fabric if you want so just like i did uh, before this live stream i just wanted to see if those colors are mixing very well and do i need this darker color or not i just was deciding um, which colors to choose so it's a great way um, to practice on some piece of uh, fabric that you don't need before trying some colors or some new techniques or especially if you are too afraid to start stitching with the actual pattern with the big object like this to try your hand on some piece of fabric and I also listen to some podcasts so um, and uh, I have I know a few podcasts for uh, embroidery teachers so there are some interviews with some uh, embroidery artists and they give some tips so if you want uh, I can recommend those podcasts in the comments see right here especially when you're stitching you need to keep the right stitches direction because you need to this stitches direction to be too much with this uh, direction right here so when you will be adding the another color right here for blending uh, it will look consistent or right here you can stop stitching and continue with the lightest color and then you can continue with this uh, darker color and it's a spooky season right now so in canada i start seeing some houses decorated with um, halloween decorations and it's uh, so interesting uh, especially in the evening when it's dark some decorations are glowing in the dark <laughs> and I like to walk and to look around uh, who else decorated his uh, house and it's it's so new to me because uh, in Ukraine we usually don't celebrate Halloween at all but here people are celebrated but um, I learned that not all people like this uh, um, holiday and they most of them probably don't uh, celebrate so it depends um, let me know how it's in your area uh, do you usually celebrate uh, Halloween or not or, and is it a lot of uh, houses decorated with for Halloween right now? Yeah, I feel like my hands, they become sticky <laughs> more and more. So yeah, it's a downside of using um, stick and stitch paper. And I definitely need to buy that pincushion for cleaning my needles. 
You know the one that filled with um, sand? All right, I'm switching to the lightest color that we have. In my pattern it's uh, 3705, um, but I have a similar color that I found and it's originally it's Cosma. And this is the color of the Cosma and this is... Uh, it's, it looks the same like the one that I mentioned in the pattern, so... It can be 892 or it can be 3705, it's uh, almost the same. And I take only one strand of floss and you can switch to the smaller needle if you want. So I will start blending those colors. You can go like between your threads right here. You can move your needles like this and put your needle between the threads or you can just don't worry about that and you can split your previous stitches, it's just fine. Whatever way you will choose, it's gonna be great. And with my needle I just go between the stitches in the middle like not in the middle but on the edge with this area like this think of it like you are drawing with color pencils for example I usually have my eye trained so I see where I should put my needle um, and uh, but if it's hard for you you can lay down your thread this way and then you can decide when you need to put your needle so it will so all your stitches will match this will have the same stitches direction and will be placed nicely so you can do this way and don't be afraid to go deep into the previous color as you can see right now I go deep into the previous color and I come up um, Right, right in the middle of it and it will help me to make the best color transition because the color will be mixing more smoothly if you want to do it faster you can use two strands of loss but uh, just keep in mind that um, color transition will not be so smooth with two strands but it still will be um, just fine so again if you are not sure you just want to practice and do some stitch some sampler like example on some piece of fabric that you don't need and you will see how many strands do you want to use and which colors you want to use here if you are a beginner, so there is one more way how you can uh, stitch this embroidery design. It's not necessary for you to fill everything with long and short uh, stitch. You can uh, just color this area if you don't use a stick and stitch solve. Of course, you can color this area with background using some fabric markers and you can stitch only outline just borders of these objects and it's gonna be fine or you can stitch it first using fabric using this uh, stabilizer 
and then once you washed it away, away you can um, color the background using some markers or maybe you want to play with some watercolor and it's gonna be a really fast way how to complete this uh, embroidery and it's gonna be like a really cute mixed media project and it's faster to to complete <laughs> maybe deciding to do this way i'm ruining all the rules of uh, long and short shading but it just uh, i decided that it's gonna be more comfortable for me to keep track of all of those uh, areas and i don't know you can do it another way and show me the result and i will be happy to see that you try some other ways and i'm also learning with you and there is no strict rules <laughs> nobody will like uh, punish you for that <laughs> So yeah, I almost finished and I will add a few stitches right here to add some light to this area as well. And that's it. I little bit uh, prepared and I did an outline. I used only one strand of floss and uh, for the bottom line I used this color. And for the top line, I use the darkest color, and this is the one uh, because um, on the top I will have a lot of uh, dark color right on the edge, and on the bottom edge, I assume that I will have less darkest color and I will have more of this. Color. so I decided to go to do it uh, this way and uh, for outline I use a split stitch so I use this uh, symbol <laughs> because uh, it's silicone and uh, because my finger hurt a little bit uh, it's it's a bit hard to go through three fabrics at a time it's uh, bottom cotton fabric and linen fabric plus uh, stick and stitch stabilizer so it's a little bit hard uh, a little bit unusual using the symbol but um, it's better much better for my fingers let me zoom in so you will see all the details if you are new here you can uh, join this stitch along if you want to stitch those mushrooms with me getting this pattern on my etsy shop or you can join my patreon community and get two embroidery patterns with mushrooms and uh, you will also get access to all the projects i have on patreon there is more than 100 uh, projects all the links will be in the video description below so I do a split stitch and I use only one strand of floss. I just need the outline before I will fill the entire cup of the mushroom. So I will have a sharp edges. This outline will be hidden under the long and short stitching. So, but it's better to use the same color that you will use for filling. So it's not gonna show up under your stitches, just in case. Let me know in the comments if you are stitching this mushroom with me and where are you from and give me some, I don't know, some feedback about your embroidery skills, what you want to improve and how did you find me and anything so we could chat. So right now I'm finishing the outline and if you have a long strand of floss right now you can park your thread on the side and you can continue stitching with it later so i will park it on the side and i'm switching to the medium color but it's darker from the one that i was using uh, last time and I'm gonna be continue doing the blending and filling the cup of the mushroom. 
So uh, as you can see, I, I decided this time to start filling from the middle. It's a kind of weird way how you can feel <laughs> the objects, <laughs> but um, I'm experimenting and I want to see if this uh, method um, also works fine. Um, some of you often ask me about this method, so um, is it okay if I will be doing it this way? And um, I decided to try and see how it's gonna work. So right now I'm gonna go to the top part. Uh, just my thread is finished right here, so I didn't want to jump far away from there and I will be doing long and short stitches and I will be moving to the middle so I go deep into the area where I already filled with uh, another color so I just do like mixing of the colors it's not necessary that you need to have your stitches really close to each other this way is even better because uh, if you jump from one place to another um, because um, your rows with colors will not look so obvious Stitching with one strand of floss can take a lot of time, so if you don't want to waste a lot of time, if you're okay with the result that you will have with two strands of floss, you can stitch with two strands of floss, that's fine. And this area that I'm feeling right now is not really uh, so much critical, because I will have, I will add a uh, white uh, marks on the top and it's just the background but I decided to make it with a gradient so it's gonna look like 3D and uh, all the imperfections that you will have here uh, you can hide under your top layer of the white marks for the mushroom so that's fine so no worries if it's not perfect, It's if it's not too so smooth as you want it, that's not critical at all, like right now, for this case. <laughs> So I tried to stick to the same stitches direction like I marked it for myself initially so the blending will look smooth and the right stitches direction it also will help you to, to display this mushroom like a real one to, it's gonna look more realistic so it's also important if you want to get some realistic look the colors are really close, so you might not see a difference, a difference um, through the camera, through the video, so... But I actually see the difference, and this area becomes a slightly darker, and it's gonna be more visible when I will switch to the darker color. Let me know guys, how is your mood? Is this already sweater weather in your country? <laughs> I live in Canada and uh, it's still warm and sunny right here and I still wear my t-shirt and summer clothing but in the evening it's already cold so I have to wear some jacket or hoodie and it's really surprisingly warm I didn't expect that it's gonna be so warm in Canada in this period and it's actually October and I wear t-shirts like <laughs> what's going on but I'm really glad about it so I'm happy about the weather here and the colors of the trees is already really beautiful and colorful outside so I tried to have a walk every day if I have a chance is if the weather is still beautiful so I try to not miss any beautiful day it's definitely sucks and sleeper weather in the house <laughs> um, you know our apartment is uh, pretty warm so but uh, I wear socks and slippers even in summer so I don't see the difference yet okay I need to start a new thread so I park this one on the side and I will finish it later. 
better. Let me know guys if you already see the difference. I see that this part is be becomes uh, darker. Um, somebody said that I love the fall colors, except I don't understand the fascination with pumpkins and pumpkin spice, everything. <laughs> Me too. Is that something in Canada too or just in the United States? Uh, actually, it's in the Canada too. Um, I don't understand it uh, also. I didn't try a pumpkin spice coffee yet. I need to try just for the sake that um, I tried and uh, <laughs> I don't know but I, I definitely need to try just to know what it is and how it tastes in Ukraine there is no such uh, story with pumpkins and pumpkin spice coffee especially with pumpkin spice coffee we don't have this kind of coffee in ukraine maybe right now uh, people are trying to stay in the loop with uh, the other world and they are trying to um, to implement it in ukraine and um, yeah, usually in Ukraine people don't decorate houses with pumpkins. Uh, there is no such holidays like you have uh, with pumpkins. And uh, the, we have no Thanksgiving, we have no Halloween. Um, sometimes in some nightclubs um, there can be some Halloween and uh, um, events. Um, I've been to such events, uh, but that's it. Basically, we don't celebrate those. Um, and um, yeah, in Canada, I already noticed more and more houses decorated for Halloween. And uh, many houses are decorated with pumpkins. Um, for me, it's, it's so beautiful. And for me, it's so new and I really like and enjoy um, walking <laughs> and seeing all of that around um, so yeah um, I will let you know if I will try the pumpkin spice uh, coffee <laughs> what uh, else uh, would you recommend me to try um, so let me know in the comments so pumpkin spice is the flavor that they put in the lattes and cereal and candles. So it's like a, um, like a syrup, like sugar syrup, something sweet. Is it really spicy? <laughs> I don't know. And also Gillian says that pumpkin spice is trying to spread in the UK. Nice to know. And uh, please let me know if you're from UK. Is there a lot of houses decorated with pumpkins and stuff? And do you guys celebrate Halloween? Interesting to know. So it's uh, a little bit tricky to mix the colors if they go like in parallel each other, but it's possible. So I'm just filling this all until probably this point and I go a little bit uh, far away from the area that it's supposed to be like mix it with another color because I'm gonna use another color on top of this I will be adding just a few uh, stitches uh, in the middle of the existing stitches so I will mix uh, I will give it will give an effect that you are mixing two colors right here the more colors you use which are really close to each other the better i use right now four colors you can use even more colors like five six colors if this area is big enough and it allows you to do so so do it and it will give even more soft uh, gradient and uh, from the colors that you use and you will not have to make like deep long uh, stitches into previous uh, color because your next color is already really close to the previous one and uh, it already will give you an effect of the of the gradient okay Jillian says that trick or treating is big for kids people usually decorate with carved pumpkins it's to show that they are happy to trick and treat 
Twitter is too can to knock. Oh. Yeah, here in Canada, somebody told me that not everyone is celebrating the Halloween, so people go um, for trick or treat to the houses uh, which are decorated. So this way they know that um, they are welcomed here <laughs> and some decorations are glowing in the dark and uh, we saw a few houses which are which has glowing decorations here and it's really funny so how many work in progress do you have right now uh, <laughs> some people have 19 projects in progress uh, I don't have so much progress projects uh, in at the same time right now. I try to finish all the projects that I start because I make um, instructions and I make patterns and tutorials. So I have no choice. I just have to finish them right once I started. I couldn't stand and uh, started this, this stitch along with mushrooms because it's uh, just a, a perfect time. <laughs> for this tutorial and for this uh, pattern and uh, I had this pattern in progress from the last year and another bigger mushrooms pattern I created two years ago I guess and I really want to stitch it too because it's really gorgeous and it deserves to be stitched I transferred the pattern using stick and stitch stabilizer and I'm stitching the big pattern like this for the first time. Uh, previously I was stitching just a small design for my shirt. And it's really comfortable to stitch on the clothing, but for the bigger designs uh, it's a bit complicated to work with because especially with long and short shading my fingers become sticky I know maybe needle becomes sticky too but I definitely that feel that my fingers become sticky how do you guys uh, stitch big patterns with uh, this stabilizer how do you like do you have some tips <laughs> Oh, the humidity of your environment can affect how sticky the sticky solely is. Yeah, probably that's the case. The humidity here is high, so that's why it's so sticky. So right here on the bottom, I try to fill this all. I don't skip any space, but on the top I was skipping some space near the top line as you can see but on the bottom I feel everything uh, I'm planning to add just a few stitches uh, with the darkest shade on the shade on the bottom uh, but on the top I will be feeling it more closely so I'm switching to one strand of loss and I will start right here to feel some space and I will be moving to the right and then I will be back to the middle and complete this uh, part and then once I finish with this color I will switch to the darkest one yeah you actually can stitch uh, the same way any pattern you would like you just stitch the borders and if you want some to add some uh, details you can add some French notes and that's it my husband stitched my queen bee pattern this way he just stitched the, only the outline using uh, black floss and he really enjoyed it. Yes, my husband is also stitching. <laughs> it was Covid times, he was boring, he couldn't go outside, it was winter, so it was really relaxing for him because, uh, you know, you can be worried if you will get sick if you go outside, so you remember those times. It was pretty stressful, so he decided to do some embroidery and he tried and he liked it. So right now, here I just mix the colors and I add stitches and I don't go outside of the outline, but on the bottom, if you noticed, I did stitches outside of the, bot of the bottom line 
because I was uh, completing this area. This outline should be hidden under the stitches. So that's it for this area and I move to the right side. Some mushrooms, they orange, so you can use some colors from that goes from red to orange or just orange colors that goes to the light yellow, so it depends on which kind of mushrooms you will make. I didn't know that um, Amanita mushrooms, they can be orange, but I really saw um, the real mushrooms here and uh, they are really orange. If you worry that how will you know where to put all those marks because you stitch it on the top uh, of everything and you just filled everything with long and short stitching uh, don't worry we will cut um, we will make one more sticking stitch layer with marks for this mushroom and we will add it on the top and we will um, I will use uh, French knots to make them so it can be a little hard to go through all those layers, but it's definitely worth it. If you feel that you can add those marks without any directions, without any pattern, just uh, by looking at my pattern and uh, so you will figure out where should they go, you can go ahead and do so. Uh, I would also do this way because, um, you know, just improvisation and I would like to show you the mushrooms that I was teaching yesterday I was just practicing and this is the teeny mushroom that I made let me know guys if you see everything clearly so um, it's just a teeny one you can see how small it is compared with my fingers and uh, I was just improvising without any guidelines and uh, those white marks I made with French knots and I used only one strand of loss. And I think that um, it can become some cute uh, pattern or maybe I will, I will make something from this mushroom and because it's really cute. So I added the stem for it and I will embroider it and I will update you with the progress uh, for this mushroom as well. And I was also uh, experimenting with um, fabric markers. And this is the result. I tried to, made, uh, to make an autumn leaf and I also tested uh, all the colors that it has and uh, it's really cute. It can be a nice way to fill um, big areas for you and uh, um, you just will need to add the outline for everything and uh, the background will be filled using those fabric markers. And it's a, it can be a nice t-shirt project or because they are washable because on the package it says that it's um, fabric markers. This is uh, the markers that I used and it has a limited amount of colors but um, you can find such markers online and um, it can have more colors for your like, drawing, experimenting on the fabric. <laughs> Um, it says that I need to iron uh, the fabric uh, before washing, so the color will stay. And it's another way how you can perform such patterns like this. So you can fill the background with such uh, markers and stitch only borders. and. Uh, you will be able to finish the project uh, very fast. And it's perfect for beginners uh, if you are not ready for long and short stitching like I do. So it's a great solution for you. If 
you want uh, to learn some tips for long and short shading, I have a video on my YouTube channel for lettering. And in the end of this video, I'm making letters with long and short stitch. And I share a lot of tips for long and short shading uh, there, so you can watch it and maybe try to implement. and. You can also practice like I did on some piece of fabric, uh, just some random piece of fabric that you don't need, that you have, uh, and you can practice like I did for the mushrooms, because I wasn't sure that which strategy I want to use, so I decided to test it and try it. Do you have an online course? I have a YouTube channel. And it's, it has a lot of free embroidery tutorials. And I also have embroidery patterns where I teach different techniques. So you can learn from there. And you can also learn from my Patreon. On Patreon I share all the educational articles um, sometimes. And uh, there is more video tutorials. Uh, they're mostly real-time tutorials. And for the, I have a course for how to stitch the bird, and it's available on Patreon. So you can find a lot of projects for different kind of levels for beginners, intermediate teachers, and advanced level to practice and learn something. Let me know, guys, what do you usually stitch in the October? Maybe I should make some more embroidery designs for autumn. I already have pattern for pumpkins. I have two embroidery designs and I will have those... Uh, I also have those mushrooms, but maybe you are looking for some other topics like autumn leaves, anything else that you would like me to create so let me know in the comments yeah it was a good idea to switch to two strands of floss for the bottom row because i was able to feel it much faster and on the edge right here it uh, it, give, it gave me a little bit of uh, volume so it looks like uh, three-dimensional so it takes some time to fill this and it will take some patience, you will need some patience, but I really enjoy it and it's really calming, so that's why I like hand embroidery. One more thread with this color and I will fill this area. And then I will switch to the darker color and I will finish this part. And yeah, I'm gonna use two strands of floss. Okay, so this is probably the last uh, few stitches for this color and I'm switching to the darker color. And it's gonna be the final color for this uh, cup of the mushroom. I will part my thread and I will finish it later. So I'm switching to another color and it's this darker. And this is the number of this color. And I'm gonna take only one strand of floss because I want to make a smooth transition from this color to the darker one. And I will start the thread with a few stitches. I don't want to use knots for this project. I want it to stay neat. And it's also... You can accidentally split your knot uh, from the top if you don't know where each knot is located. So it's really uncomfortable, especially when you are feeling this um, way, when you actually need to put your stitches into the same place again and again sometimes. But 
do you make this probably pattern available? Yes, this pattern is available on my Etsy shop and you can get it there and join my stitch along. I will be stitching this pattern um, those probably two weeks. So next week I will stitch the bottom part and the stem and probably and next time I will show you how to stitch the smaller mushroom another way, how to fill the cup another way. Probably the the best way, best practice way <laughs> uh, for long and short shading. And then probably the third week or the last day uh, we will stitch the leaves and berries. So it's a lot of work and we will see when it will be finished but i try to enjoy every minute of this because it's a really cute pattern i really love it Probably the best way how you blend those colors is to start from the top, but I already started on the bottom, so I will probably move to the center and I will add some stitches on the bottom right here. I just add short stitches just to make the difference um, and show that there is some shadow right here. But I will not go into this middle of this because probably it's uh, it's gonna be the lightest part right here. But um, so I go back to the left side and I will continue mixing the colors. So the darkest part will go on the edge on the top. And once I started on the left. Um, I probably would like to move to the top and you can do this by making short um, stitches like random stitches here and there so um, moving from the top to the bottom is going to be more comfortable for me so I'm moving there It's okay, you don't need to jump and make a long stitch on the back side. You can just jump with sh uh, short stitches like this. Okay, and now I'm stitching uh, and I put my needle outside of the border because it's gonna be the final color that I make and this border shouldn't be visible. And I don't make really long stitches right here, I make comparingly shorter stitches that comparing with the previous colors. Sometimes I make them longer to, to go deeper in the previous color. And here as well I try to follow the same stitches direction that I need for the shape of this mushroom. That can make it look realistic. If you will go straight from the top to the bottom with um, and your stitches direction will not be changed like it will be go directly from here to here um, it will not work so you need to change the stitches direction accordingly to the shape of the mushroom it is good to have some real picture of the mushroom and see how it looks uh, when you're stitching so this is the most complicated part. If you nailed it, don't worry. You will nail each of the mushroom right here. So this is the most complicated part. All the rest will be super simple. Right now I see that I have some gaps right here with a lighter color, so I'll probably go back 
um, and add a few stitches right there but first I will add some stitches with darker color and uh, I will see if I need to do so or not so that's fine if you see that you need to have you have some gaps you can always go back to this place and fill it with the color that you need so this is a knot that I sometimes have um, just like you <laughs> and this is okay the main thing is to not uh, tight it right away you can easily fix it by turning this loop to another side like this and now you can easily fix it but sometimes if you tight it too much accidentally um, you will have to cut it and start, and start a new thread unfortunately <laughs> but that's fine as you can see it happens with me as well and this is nothing, nothing critical so now I will feel this area and probably I will switch to two strands of floss because uh, this way I can feel it faster and I'm going outside of this line and outside of this line so both lines will be covered with my stitches and I need to switch to two strands of floss so this is how I will do so I yeah, will make a few more stitches right here and I will just put my threads together so it's gonna make two strands of floss I will come up in the area that will be filled with my stitches uh, and I will do the same thing that I did for when I was starting the thread so I make um, my thread the same along, like the, it's, it's gonna be the same like my main thread and I will make a stitch and one more stitch right here and I will cut this And I will make a few stitches and now I can continue and fill this part. And I already used two strands, which I made from one strand of loss. Your stitches direction should be like by diagonal right here. You shouldn't go like this because um, I know it will not look consistent with all the rest stitches direction and uh, it will take more time to finish so i prefer this stitch direction right here i'm trying to explain you everything that i do but if you still have questions you can ask me in the chat and uh, you can ask me in the comments and i will explain it to you okay i will finish here and I will park my thread so I will finish it later and I will go ahead and start a new thread and I will finish everything on the left side the same way like I did for the right side so you already know what to do on the left side and I will be back to you tomorrow and we will finish the top part of the mushroom and we will add some marks with white embroidery threads and uh, I will show you how to do it tomorrow on the live stream. Thank you so much for joining and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to participate in my stitch along. So this is how this design looks like and see you tomorrow. Bye guys!